I'm in Keswick today and I'm going to do Lat Rig, which is one of the smallest Wainwrights. It's the smallest one in Northern Fells, but really important because it's a lot of people's first fell. So I'll show you a little circular walk around that. I'm just at the side of the park. The uh, river is behind me, River Greta, and there's space here for about 30 cars. So if you are looking for somewhere to park, uh, this is a good little spot. Right, let's go on the walk. I'm just park near the river, just here. And today's walk, I'm going to go up there on the Cumbrian Way, pop back down onto Lap Rig itself, and then we'll work our way over the rest of the walk around to Brundholm, and then we'll follow the river back to here. It's an easy walk, it's about two hours around, so if you want to just do one fell in the day and then pop into the, uh, the town for a bit of shopping or a pint, then this is a good walk to do. I'm just jumping onto the, the route at this point, where it's the uh, time sharing information. So if you want a place in the lakes, they could help you out. But that's what we're doing. As I'm starting off, I've just come onto the track from the old railway line. That's the old Keswick railway station, and that is now a hotel. There we go, still looks like a railway station there. From the railway station, we're just taking the road up and then we'll get towards Lat Rig. A few of these around, uh, these are some of the glacial boulders that have come off Lat Rig. The route I'm taking today is a 9k circular and it starts at the old station, but we're going to go up to Lat Rig and there's Lat Rig just on the outskirts of Keswick. A little bit of snow about today. That's up towards Skiddor. Today we're going to go up from Keswick, work our way up Spoonie Green Lane, and then to the edge of the wood, head up the edge, and then up to Lat Rig itself. Now as you come off the road, just get to this signpost here. So Skiddor four miles, uh, Lat Rig is just up there, and Skiddor is over in the distance. So once over the bridge, we're walking towards the edge of that forest area and then walking back towards ourselves to get to the top of that rig. Go out for some hedge management. <laughs> Space for your bin there. <laughs> this is a really family friendly walk, so a great one to do with the kids. This will be a lot of people's first walk ever up a fell. The path itself is pretty broad and well maintained. So that's good, easy access all the way up. Let's right, just go through this gate, a few families there on the way up. Yeah. Lat rig itself, the same as uh, Luff rig last week. Still has a red squirrel population, and I'll be after the hazelnuts, so I might be able to see some hazel trees on the walk. Gold crests around, spotted flycatchers, uh, and in the uh, winter, which it is now, you might see a bit of yellow brain fungus. Got the remains of an old gate on the way up. Uh, I not really anticipated this, but on the way up, you do get really good views quite quickly. So yeah, already good views. It's well worth doing this, especially if it's your first fell. It's mid-feb now, so he's starting to get a bit of flower around. Gauze is flowering up there, adding a bit of colour to the hillside. See these quite a lot of the way up. It's an old uh, fence that doesn't exist anymore, but in the book Waymite says that Lat Rig is to Keswick, what Luff Rig is to Ambleside, and Helm Crag is to Grasmere. It's a small hill with an excellent viewpoint, a great favourite for local folk and visitors. So yeah, it is a great Parkland walk just outside of the uh, town centre. So it's really popular with kids, should be busy today. Good little walk. If you're doing this walk in a bit short of time, you can go this way and it takes you straight to the top. But we're gonna go this way and have a little wander around the woods. 
see the forest on this side of me. It's still a managed woodland and the industry around here is essentially uh, forestry. It used to be that the whole of Lat Rig was covered in trees but no longer, it's a bit more bare on top these days. As you come out of the woods, that's the view down. So over there you've got Lord's Seat and Broomfell and Bath. Still a little touch of snow at the top there. Uh, difficult to get lost on this walk. You're basically following this fence around and then we head back up the mountain. These are uh, fox gloves ready to come up next time. So in spring they'll be up just hitting the turn point now. If you carry on down there, you can get to Blancathra, but uh, this is where we're going. So public footpath to Lat Rig, three quarters of a mile. There we go. It's a great view down. I wasn't sure what to expect from this walk because we've not been up this way before, but that is a great view down. So if you want to introduce someone to the fells with a fairly short walk, it's pretty easy. This is a good one. All the dods are there, so Great Dodd, Watson's Dodd, Stybarrow Dodd, and then Heartside in the back. But the reason I've not gone right to the top of Skidor today is because you can already see the low clouds coming in there. It's quite a low cloud base today. But it won't get us, because we're only going up here. This uh, ghostly fence is all the way up. And it's actual fence bits missing, but the posts are still there. It's a bit of a zigzag path this. Go around and double back on yourself a couple of times. Now we're heading back in that same direction towards Keswick. Going a little bit higher up now. And just as you get to this bit, you can see it's quite busy there. There's a few people on the way up to the top. And you've got Doe and Water just here. And then the village of Keswick just next to it. Just hitting a few snow patches. Sees a lot of people about, but a little bit of snow there, so just that line. You can see the woods below, and in the box, uh, <laughs> uh, in the box, Wayne Wright is saying that those woods are populated by courting couples and wild beasts, so they're not safe for a single people on their own. <laughs> He's found something, that dog. When you get to the top of that rig, there's a very famous bench there, which looks out onto Keswick. Um, I get a chance to sit on it, but I doubt it's today. <laughs> there's about 50 people here. There you go, there's the bench at the top though. down to Keswick and then Dome Water as it stretches out. This is the more direct route but it's a bit of a long buster. It's quick though. Let's <laughs> get a quick look. Oh, that's Misty. 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 There you go, there's a cat out on the top for a little walk. Enjoying that <laughs> oh. aren't you? <laughs> Take, nice take the cat, yeah, yeah we stayed, we either stayed at the Netwell Lodge or sort of Keswick Reef yeah. and they said we could bring the cat, so That's amazing. we thought we'd give it a so, try. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, she likes to get out. Past the bench, if you carry on going up, you come across the top and it is just here. So that is the summit. In the distance there you can see Skiddaw, it's a little dust in the snow on top. Uh, if you've not seen the Skiddaw video, then have a look at that after you've seen this. You'll see me in pretty high winds, but not as high as the ones the other week on the uh, Newlands Watershed Part 2, when uh, <laughs> it got a bit dangerous. As you can see, it's pretty grassy on top. It's ideal for grazing for these sheep. Because it's mudstone, which is this kind of stuff, 
it's quite loose and the tops are quite soft so they're quite gentle tops You've got the uh, Newlands watershed. You can see the distinctive little bubble there from uh, Causey Pike and then Rolling End coming down here. Then in the distance you've got Catbells and then Hind Scarfs just at the top over there. From the top just behind me we just head over and in front of here couple of little trees and then you can go up to Blencathra just up there we're gonna go down and then round the bottom back to the village muddy just gonna get through this gate on the route yeah this is not one for trainers a bit too much mud hanging around woo as we're coming across the sun's just catching the valley and this uh, bubbly little mess over here, that's low rig, and then high rig is just up there. If you want to continue this route on a little bit further, you can go the Blencathra route, which is just up there, and that'll avoid sharp edge for you. Even though it's a low walk, this is uh, still pretty good views over the valleys. So yeah, it's definitely worth doing, it's a good one. On the way back down now, we're going to go and meet the River Greta, which is just down there, and then walk across the valley floor. As you can probably see from behind me, it's a bit of an indistinct field walk, this. I'd expect it to be more marked than it is, but it's not. It's just like a little run straight down. Before I started this walk, I just thought I'd check out a few reviews, see what was happening. They did say it was muddy and slippy, and I know what they're talking about now, because this field really is is just grass but it's pretty slippy on top i've got decent boots on i'm still slipping uh, so yeah not one for trainers just on way down to the river now and blencastle is just up there when you're walking it's sort of adjacent to it it doesn't look that big but <laughs> it does now. It's quite steep up. It's very uh, curved up as well. But for us, we're just going straight by the river and we'll walk back to the village. Then we can have a little look around there, see what's in there. I'm just going to keep going down, but that's the other place you can go. So, Lotrock Skiddaw, and that's the path we've just been on essentially. And then Woodland Walk to Keswick. Uh, that's what we did at the start of the walk. But we're going to do it this way around and then hit the valley in a sec down there. There's a little bridge we're going over. As we're coming back on this bit, the side of us, we've just got the unpronounceable Glendera Terrebeck. <laughs> that's what it's called. It's just running down there. And I think it's going to meet up with Greta down the bottom here. 
I'll say Blaine Catherine's just at the side here. If you've not seen that video, then check it out after this if you want to have a look at it. Uh, it's got sharp edge on there, which is quite a narrow ridge walk. It's a little bit dangerous, but it's probably comparable to something like um, Striding Edge. So if you want to go up Striding Edge or have a look at Striding Edge as well, have a look at the Hell of Ellen Walk. I'll put it in the description for you. As we get down to the River Gressa, it's just here. There you go, it's a nice little scene. Uh, Brundholm Bridge just there, and that's going across it. We're going to go like this way, but I'm just going to go over the bridge just to show you the bridge. That's the way through here. We're not going to go in this direction, but I'll just show you this bridge. It's part of the uh, new works around here. There's a very old bridge over there. Well, this looks more substantial. Right, so that's the back we went past on the way down the hill as we came down. We're just joining the river dresser here as it coming around. And then it's the other side as it works its way down to Keswick. This is the original one, or one like the original, but it wasn't like that. It says the first one was like this, it's upside down, and the reason it's like that is because it wanted to preserve the views of the valley for the railway passengers because it's the old railway line there's the original bridge after it got wiped out in 2015 by storm desmond so this building here which now resembles more like a bus stop is the original waiting room for the train this is the uh, hotel back in the day where we started the walk just passing this hazel tree so the reason why this is um, a red squirrel area is they're after the hazelnuts this is the male part of the pollination process and the little tiny red parts of the female parts it self pollinates and it creates hazelnuts and that's a favorite of the red squirrel So the second bridge we're coming across. There's the river again, looking a bit choppy. Check out the other side. It's pretty wide. So we're still on the old railway line. So yeah, they are necessary, these bridges. Back, you do cross the river quite a few times, so this is like the fourth bridge I've been down. You see some of the erosion happening at the edge there. Oh dear, trees falling over into it. It's the road down here, it's a tarmac surface, so I've seen quite a few bikes go down. If you've got any mobility issues, then pretty good little walk out. Uh, can take you all the way down the railway track and then when you're ready just turn back if you are doing it i think it's a six mile stretch so that's a five mile marker the managed woodland up on that rig um some of it was used for this it's bobbin industry which was prevalent around there it said um pretty 19th century so that's what you would have used in factories to get your yarn on to make cotton products and woolen products it's saying here that on this railway there was one up train in the morning brought workers from Keswick to Cockermouth and a down train collected them Monday to Saturday. On the way back we're pretty much always walking at the side of the river and we're just about to go through this interesting little tunnel here. It's the Bobbin Mill Tunnel. Alright, so it goes from corrugated iron, then it turns into brick. There 
we go, and back. Across the tunnel and just above it, you've got the A66 Majestic. Penrith and Sunderland that way, but we're going to Keswick. This has been the lowest swaying rate in the Northern Fells. Uh, next time I'm going out later in the week, I'm going to do the highest one in the Southern Fells. So that is Scarfield Pike. back in Keswick now so I hope you've enjoyed the video if you have just click on the like if you uh, want to see more of this then just click on subscribe it's the red thing in the corner and we'll go into the village now and see what's about